welcome. So today I'm going to be going through a sort of beginner's guide to the iPACE. Now one of the first things I would recommend for looking at the other features of the car is to go through my hints and tips video on, on this channel and uh, there's quite a lot of information there. Now one slight caveat on that, most of those are for my car which is an HSC, there are differences between the models as you may well know. Um, you can spec some of the features which are missing from the HSC, from the SE and S models, um, which I have on my car. Things like the 360 degree camera, but if you haven't, they won't be there. So some of the features in my hints and tips may not apply to you, but a lot of them are very relevant, even so. There's also some really good videos which go through all the features of the car um, from a guy called Jaguar. Um, which I'll link to again at the end of this video, which have a look at basically the hold of all the console setups. And I, I won't go through those. Some of those have changed slightly in the latest model, but only ever so slightly. Um, the other thing I will talk about is the heads up display, which again is not on the lower models, um, but you, you can see that in some of my videos. Anyway, um, let's get no more further ado. Let's go on and have a look at some of the features. So, one of the first things you're going to need to know about with the iPACE, and I've just unlocked the door so I can get to the charge flap here, is charging. And the charging is made up of two types of charging. You've got AC and DC, alternating current and direct current. And we start at the top here. This is the AC connector. This is the Type 2 connector. And you'll find this on your home charger and also some destination chargers as well. And don't confuse this with the Tesla type of charger. Tesla have their own Type 2 charger, which allows for DC as well um, and is proprietary to them so you can't use uh, a type 2 connector off say a, a tesla supercharger in fact you can't use tesla superchargers at all you can use some tesla destination chargers um, so anyway this is your type 2 connector as i say you'll see it on your home charger if you get a home charger installed it'll come in one of two varieties a 16 amp or a 32 amp i'd go for a 32 amp because the the ipace can take a 32 amp charge at seven kilowatts if you go for a 32 amp you're only going to get 3.6 kilowatt um, charging and the kilowatt is, is a unit of power kilowatt hour is a unit of storage so basically if you if i say you get 7.2 kilowatts um you you're over an hour you'll get seven ish kilowatt hours there's some loss for charger cable um, heating and things like that but basically you'll get seven kilowatt hours per over an hour and that, that gives you an idea how long it would take to charge your car so if this, this child car will take around 86 kilowatt hours there's, there's, although it says it's a 90 kilowatt hour battery, um, top of the buff, buffering on that to, to allow you to um, safely store the car without having to have it charged to 100%. So let's look at these chargers. We've got Type 2, plug the cable in there. And then if we take this bit off the bottom, we've then got the DC chargers. And DC is what you should be using on the move. If you're charging at a motorway or service station, you should be using the CCS combined charging that, that basically stands for combined charging because it combines a type 2 connector and two pins for direct current and these direct current allow you to charge much faster up to about 100 kilowatt um, charging now you won't get 100 kilowatts all the time this is really important to note 100 kilowatts will only be available for a very short period of time um, basically you, you get 100 kilowatt um, charging at, at optimum conditions that, conditions that is when the battery is at 25 um, degrees temperature and that's the battery not the outside temperature uh, it's at 25 degrees um, and it still only asks for a very short amount of time as, as the charger as the battery char state of charge that's the how much charge you've got in the battery you'll hear it referred to as soc or state of charge um, increases the, the the amount of charge gets um, lower and lower um, you, you can get into the battery now there was a great thing on one of the uh, um, charge points I, I believe it was the eon charge point we explained this as being like a theatre filling up. As you first go into a theatre you can charge a lot quicker because you can get a lot of people into the seats a lot quicker but as it starts to fill up you have to hunt for spaces to, to put your charge in or hunt for those spaces to put people in. So that's basically what we're looking at here. So anyway that's your Type 1, 2, that's your Type 2 and uh, DC or your CCS and you need to look for CCS chargers. There are several types of chargers at the motorway service stations. Um, Ecotricity which is You'll hear a lot of bad things said about ecotricity because they often aren't working. Um, and they're also challenged for ice-based unit owners because normally there's two chargers at each service station. Um, one of these will not have a CCS connector on it. 
um, and often, as I say, the CCS won't work. Um, but you need to look out for the CCS one, and you can usually tell this because it doesn't have either a Renault or a Nissan sticker on it. Um, the other, the original chargers were sponsored by Nissan, and they have what's called a Chatamo connector, different type of connector, much a very big round connector and also uh, a, a type 2 cable. Now that type 2 cable will go up to 43 kilowatts. Unfortunately the iPace will not take 43 kilowatts, it'll only take 7 kilowatts, no matter how big the charger is. And I would recommend not using those, um, even if you're desperate, because the, they, they won't charge very quickly at all. Um, and also if you do charge on them, people who have things like a Renault Zoe will who may be desperate for charge won't be able to charge all that long time you'd need to leave it on charge to actually get anything decent. So look for the CCS, try to avoid uh, ecotricity, there's lots more chargers out there. Um, I, I particularly like the Polar Network, if you, if you can afford it the Iodity Network is out there as well um, and growing all the time, that's quite expensive charging but maybe if you, you're desperate that's one way to go. Anyway, one thing to note, obviously the rubber flap needs to go back on, protect the connectors when, when they're not in use. So important to note there again that 7 kilowatt is the highest charge you're going to get on AC and that's 7 kilowatt single phase. If you've got a three phase charger, um, fortunately you can only take advantage of a single phase of that and that obviously affects some people in Europe who may not have 7 kilowatts on each phase of their three phase. Hopefully over the next few years you will start to see small DC chargers becoming available which you can plug into three phase and get say 22 kilowatt uh, DC which the car will accept on CCS. Now with charging there's obviously another question, how do you set up time charging and that's a really difficult one for the iPace because in reality the iPace doesn't have time charging as such, what it has is a thing called preferred charging and you can set that on the screen and we'll show that in a second um, but the key thing here is you can only set a preferred time you want to have charging occurred so you could say you want to charge between 12 and 7 a.m. but if you plug your car in before 12 o'clock 12 p.m. it will appear to start charging it doesn't it just fires up a little bit of power to check the battery and work out whether it can get to 100% in the time you've set for preferred charging if not it's going to start as soon as it needs to to get to 100% and that's 100% including conditioning the battery and preconditioning the battery can take up to four hours so in reality with the size of the battery on the iPlace if you start from almost flat you are never going to get a full charge in your preferred time charging so it is going to turn on before and after that time charging it goes to the departure time now one clever thing you can do um, if you set a departure time over 24 hours in the future um, you can get it to charge during the preferred charge, charging slots if it has enough time to charge up to full between the uh, the time you set the charging up and the time it's due to for departure with the preferred timings so say you've got two seven hour slots of preferred timing preferred time time for charging you will be able to get 14 hours of charge in there and including conditioning which may be enough to get fully charged but the key thing here to remember is Jaguar assume you always want 100% when you leave um, so at the point of departure when you set the departure time it will always aim to be at 100% and it's very difficult to avoid that now one way around that is when you're buying your home charger most of the new home chargers these days are what's called smart chargers and they often have apps which allow timing now I've tried this with a thing called the Ohm H -O -H -M -E charger which I really like um, it, it comes in several several varieties, a ball charger or a cable you can plug into an untethered charger. Let's talk about that just briefly. Untethered means you haven't got a cable attached to your home charger. Tethered means you have got a cable attached to your home charger. Most public chargers are untethered and you have to use a cable which comes with the car to charge them. But let's go back to the home charger. It comes in, in several varieties including a wall charger which is tethered but also um, cables you can plug into an untethered charger if you happen to have one and they provide time charging but the key thing to note here is that they are the ohm also do a one which plugs into the type of charger you see at a caravan park or a mobile home park um, which is the the blue european connector with um, which you can plug a cable into, often known as a commando connector. And if you get a 32 amp one of these, you can use have that wired in your in your house and use an ohm cable as your charger. And that, in some cases, actually is even cheaper than using um, the the government funded smart chargers because um, they're quite expensive. Some of those and the installation installation can be 
remarkably expensive for them, whereas a, a, a Komodo socket can be put in by any qualified electrician. So that's something to consider potentially. Um, an ohm charger cable for CCA for Commando is is a conversion of three hundred pounds. Uh, at the time of recording, obviously check it now. So I mentioned time charging, and you can see we've got a load of settings here. Vehicle pre preconditioning is an area you can actually go into. You can set here's where you actually set a a, a departure time, and you can do that by tapping on the screen. So say say I'm going to set a, a departure time for. 13th of April at 2 o'clock we'll do that and it'll try and precondition at that point in time also in here if you go to settings you've got vehicle preconditioning settings and you can delete the departure times but you notice you've also got this is where you set your preferred charging time so we can set it say between 2 uh, and 7am ok that and it will then attempt to charge between that times um, you can delete that at any stage. So let's let's set it for now. Let's 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 set a, a time charge between now and six fifteen. Okay, that we've done that. We've set a departure time. So what happens now is that when we come out of here, if we turn the car off, it will say, "Do you want to turn time charging on?" And I can say yes to that, and it will now attempt to charge, ready for that time charge. Now my car's not plugged in, so it won't actually charge, but you get the, the idea. OK, let's start by looking at the key fob. So the key fob here is quite useful. It's got an emergency button. You can just press that and beat the horn and flash the lights. also useful for handling the car. You can open the boot. You can open the bonnet, um, which allows you access to the front area, where you can get where I usually keep my charging cable. You can lock the car and you can unlock the car. This is this is particularly useful because you might wonder why you'd want to unlock the car using the key if you can just press the button to unlock it. Well, this is useful if your charger gets locked into your uh, charge point. Um, sometimes uh, the charge points on the road are not very good for releasing the cable once you finish charging. Um, it's a safety feature of the CCS charging units and not allow you to take the charger out while it's still providing electricity to you. If you press that button three times it will always unlock the cable and allow you to, to uh, remove it. Anyway we've got into the car now so let's have a, have a look at what we've got and one of the things you'll see quite often when you get in the car is this range indicator on the screen. So it'll show you how many miles you've got left and the charge remaining. Now one thing to note here is that the range is only an estimate. It's based on optimal conditions, usually. It's also based on your, your last piece of driving. So if you're very heavy-footed, you'll get a much lower range. If you're light-footed and a good eco-driver, then you, you'll get a much lower range. But it's a Jaguar, so I, I don't expect you to drive it like a saint, potentially. You can see here I've got 80%, 180 miles. It's about 20 degrees at the moment, so that's equates to a reasonable over 200 mile range i mean i know they quote 290 odd rate miles range that's in optimum commission conditions they have to quote the wltp um test results they can't quote anything else they can't really quote a real world range they, because by law they have to quote the wltp range um the wltp range is is a test which doesn't really reflect real world driving in, a, in an EV. So expect to get around 200, 220 miles of range, um, worse in winter, better in summer. In summer I have seen 240, 250 on my car. It does also depend on the wheel size you use. These are 20 inch wheels, you've got 22s, you're going to get less. If you've got 18 inch wheels, you're going to get a lot more. 80, um, the test results also are 18 inch wheels, so that gives you an idea that they do give you a better range. Um, obviously, if you feel fully charged, this you, you will see a much higher range. Eighty percent is um, eighty percent of eighty-six kilowatt hours, roughly. Um, the way the Jaguar works out uh, the, the the capacity of the battery is they take a little bit off the bottom and a little bit off the top, which means you don't have to worry about charging to hundred percent. I know some of our electric vehicles they tell you never charge to hundred percent, um, and this guy you can quite happily, quite safely. The battery management system will take care of it. So let's turn the car on. So we press the start stop button, put on the brake, 
and you'll see that the Jaguar logo comes up. Sometimes it spins up, this time it's just, it just comes straight up and press screen to continue. And it tells me that I didn't press the brake when I started. So let's press the brake, start, and we're okay, we should be on now. Okay, so let's look through the, the, the screen. So we've got the touchscreen duo, we've got the two controls which are multifunction. Um, so let's actually let's start with these ones here. So this is the controller for your uh, climate control. You can pull it to control your fan. I, leave, I tend to leave it on auto, which is this switch here. Or you can push it to set the temperature or push it again if you have these and they're not on all models. Heated seats, mine are heated and cooled, so I can twist them either direction. It will light up red and show you, show you it's heating, and uh, I can twist it back and call, call myself, which is probably quite nice on this day. Okay, so let's pull it, which will take us back to the fan speed. I've just turned on order four, but I can go back down to zero, and I can press this button over here to put it back onto auto, which is what I prefer. Uh, that switches you back to the temperature. Now, one interesting thing on the temperature if we push it up, you can see it's having to cool the car up to 22 degrees, and it's gone red in the middle as it's warming the car. Quite a nice little feature that it shows you if it's going to warm or cool the car. Uh, I tend to keep it balanced on that, just that edge about where it's warm and cooling, 20 degrees, that sounds reasonable, seems to keep it warm. This symbol over here means that the car is currently um, in smart climate mode, which is set by that button there. And what that means is it will detect if you're sitting in the seat, and if, it's, if you're sitting in the seat, it will only put the, the charge on for you, the, sorry, the, the climate control on for you. You've got two other buttons here, AC, max AC, which obviously um, gives you, if you put on max, you're going to get your fans going quite crazy, but also pulls you down pretty quickly. Let's turn that off, I'm just going to go over here. You've got another set, load of settings across the top. I won't go into all those because they're covered in another, another video, which I'll link at the end. Um, you've got max air, um, windscreen misting. You've also got your button for your heated windscreen, uh, if you've got one. Not all cars have those again. So again at the top here we've got the the other part of the touchscreen geo, we've got the on off button, the volume control, hazard warnings, start stop and then your navigation controls and you can customize this. Um, one thing I do want to go to, you've got this button here which is your profiles, you can set a new profile up. Um, so let's see if I've got a profile set up for me, there's my profile but I could create a new one and I can link it to my key uh, or my phone. Um, and that will then remember some settings for you. It learns as you get goes, so it'll learn things like what you prefer for your air conditioning, what you prefer for your seat, seat heating. Uh, and from there, you can connect to your phone, you've got your media, navigation. And again, I won't go into all these because PK Jaguar has gone through those in much more detail in his video, so I'll link to those. Um, you can set up some of these panels. This, this is my setup. Um, obviously, you can do what you want. Just wanted to quickly go through my, my EV panel because this is quite useful for a few settings. So the left hand one here is the range mode. This allows you to get home if you're really low on charge. It will cut things like the screen off, the air conditioning off, um, just an emergency if you're really low on charge and you're just going to get a few extra miles out of it. It only gives you a few extra miles though. Um, this is the creep mode. Now I have creep mode turned off. Creep mode is like the, uh, a traditional automatic gearbox. When, when you take your foot off the brake the car will creep forward even if you haven't got your foot on the accelerator. Um, without creep mode, the car will actually not do that. In fact, in some places, the iPace will actually roll back. I've got used to it now. Um, some people compare that to driving a, a manual, obviously without the clutch and gearbox and all that sort of stuff, but the fact it will roll back if it's not if you've not put the accelerator on. Um, I, as I, said, I prefer it now with creep mode off. I used to prefer it with creep mode on. I've got used to creep mode off and I've got used to holding it on heels with the accelerator. Um, but you might want to put creep mode on to start with and just tap that and we'll do that. And this is your regen level. So basically when you take your foot off the accelerator, how quickly the car will show that slow down using its motor to brake and not the actual physical brakes. With an EV you quite often find you don't use the physical brakes that much. Yeah, with high it will slow down very rapidly. So it's a useful feature to know about. Again, just tap it to turn it on and off. Buttons down the side. Now, one thing I do want to mention, and I mentioned this in a lot of my tips video, if you press settings, it's always relevant to where you are. So at the moment, I'm on the home screen, so I'll get home, home settings at the top. But say I went into navigation, which does take a little while to load up sometimes. There's navigation. If I hit set settings on here, see so we've got navigation settings showing up. One other thing to note here, uh, one of the things you will need to do is sign up for 
um, the navigation uh, account um, your dealer should have taken you through this but if not um, it's uh, available to you on the uh, maps account um, let me just see if I can find where that is I can't remember where it shows you that it does show that somewhere I think in navigation settings can edit profile so edit profile will allow you to um, create a, a profile account and it tells you here where you need to go to which is jaguar.here.com I don't think you actually need the www on the front of that I think it will work anyway so that's all, all useful stuff um, Quite useful one here, the battery arrange button, button will tell you how far in the UK you could actually travel or wherever you are from wherever you are to, to with the amount of charge you've got. So you can see that 180 miles is quite a long way. So let's move move on to here with that side controls there. Um, coming across to the steering wheel. Look at So let's look at the uh, steering wheel now. So we've got this roller control here which controls in, in the screen here what you've got your settings. Again, I'll refer you to the PK Jaguar video for that because it covers this in a lot more detail than I'm covering here um, but you roll it up and down and to get out of the menu just roll it to the top just, just roll it to the top and it'll come out um, this is your favorite button you can set that up to whatever you want it to do I, I use it to turn the screen on and off just to save a bit of battery and obviously your phone call back uh, control here and the um, voice recognition button which works reasonably okay if you've got a iphone plugged in or an android phone plugged in and you're you know, using the, the, the uh, apple carplay or the android uh, auto systems you can hold pre long press that to get into their voice recognition quite a useful feature obviously horn in the middle and then on the right hand side we've got some interesting controls so let's start from the top left we've got the limiter button which you can press and use i've done a video on using the limiter um, cancel for your cruise control this is your cruise control button this confused me for a long while um, so you press it up to set down to unset and then you've got these buttons either side which look like they're just indicators to show you where to press so for a long time I thought I was pressing the button to do this but in fact that's increased the distance on cruise control and decrease this is active cruise control not available on all cars um, but on active cruise control it allows you adaptive cruise control it allows you to keep a, a certain distance from the car in front again some of these features may not be on your car this is steering assist we'll come into that in a second because that's actually I think something I will cover in the menus because it's quite important and this is a heating steering wheel which again you may not have on your car so yeah that's basically your controls obviously if you've got your stalks as well so on this one we've got the windscreen wipers control um, with auto windscreen wipers and then over here we've got our lighting control um, which I usually leave set on auto uh, we should twist up to do that it depends also if you've got um, auto headlights or not or adaptive headlights um, I've got adaptive beam headlights on this car but you might have auto headlights and again you can set that that in auto so let's go through the uh, um, steering control just because I want to show you that so I'm going to go across here to vehicle settings um, and you'll see that it hasn't got any of the fate settings that I want to go for my steering control. It doesn't say anything about steering control on there. And this confused me for a while because you'd think they'd be in vehicle settings. But actually, if I press again and go across a bit more, you'll find there's a few other screens and then you get to driver assistance. And this is actually where steering assist is. Um, you've got a choice of turning on and off emergency lane keeping. Uh, I have it on. A lot of people don't like this because, on particularly on narrow roads, it can push you unexpectedly um, away from the car, the, the centre lane. It's basically supposed to keep you in lane automatically if you if you try and if you start to weep lanes, if you're tired, whatever. But I stick steering assistance is useful for virtually everybody. I have it set to both here. Now, again, cruise steering assist is only available if you've got the option which has the uh, adaptive cruise control. And, and steering assist but basically what that means is it will use the adaptive cruise controls knowledge of the road ahead to steer you and it's a much better steering than lane keep assist um, lane keep assist basically buff you from one side of the road to the other side of the road and just trying to keep in the middle whereas link it carrying cruise steering assist will take account of the vehicles ahead of you and actually follow them keeping it fairly central in the road and it does a really good job so I have I have both set on um, if you've got lane keep assist on or both um, you then have the opposite option. Um, let's go to put it back to both actually. So go to set your lane keep assist um, settings. 
but that only happen, only works when the steering button is on. So let's turn it on. So you have to do this both of this. It's not just good enough to turn it on in here. You also have to have the button on on the steering wheel. And then you can see I can actually go into lane keep assist settings, and I can choose whether I want it to actually assist me or just vibrate. And that's what I've done just to vibrate. I'll have steering assistance on when I've got cruise control on, but all the other times I'll just let it vibrate and tell me it's going over the line. Otherwise you get that sort of buffeting effect as it moves backwards and forwards. So let's look at uh, some of the other controls on the car. So over here we've got our controls for, uh, this is the climb, it's like a, a cruise control for hills. It allows you to go at steady speed up and down hills. I think it's called ASPC. Then you've got the mode buttons, which allow you to switch between comfort, eco, and of course dynamic. And also, uh, one more press on the, the eco mode is rain, ice, and snow, which is very useful. It gives you the option to have low friction launch as well, which is very useful if you're on icy surfaces. And that's a top tip, actually. I haven't actually covered this in my, my videos, but as it says on that screen, you have to have your foot off the accelerator and activate the rain, ice and snow mode while stationary to be able to do that and I'm not going to actually select it now but there we go um, you've got the ability to turn your traction control off which might be useful on a racetrack and then these buttons are for the active suspension if you have that fitted so I can go up and down on my active suspension um, one question which often gets asked is can you set it to a low road height um, all the time no, it will automatically change when it gets to a certain point. So at the bottom there, I've just selected what's called axis height. And that's a, if I started driving, once I get over a certain mile per hour, that will go up to normal height, which I'll go up to now. And then if you really want to, you can go up at one high, higher for off-road, and this will off-road quite happily. One option you do have with the low ride height is to set auto access on your convenience features so you can set that in the menu so again if we press the menu button and we'll go across to vehicle settings and then down to convenience features and you can see we've got a few options here we can have reverse dip mirror so when you go into reverse dip mirror I don't actually like that because I like to have my mirrors up for uh, seeing as I go into the garage uh, Windows Global Open and Close, which is a way of handling those with the, the remote control. More information is this, and another top tip is download the Jaguar iGuide app. Um, this will give you a lot of information about all these settings. Anyway, the one I was talking about here is auto access height. So basically what happens now is if, if I park and stop the car and put it in park, the car will actually go down to its lowest height, which is useful for getting in and out. I don't have to set that, but I, I find it quite useful one. Another thing to note in here is the wiper settings, which people sometimes struggle to find. And one option in here which is particularly useful is Winter Wiper Park, which basically parks the wipers lower down so they don't get uh, frosted over in the winter, which is quite useful. Uh, I haven't got that set at the moment, obviously. There's a lot of things in these menus worth an explore. As I say, go through the videos. I've done a couple of videos and PK Jagger has done a lot more. Now, I've just pressed that favorite button and it shows I can actually select what what to set on it so if I come over here and select function um, you've got a whole load of things you can set as your buttons um, and as I say you can turn you can have one of them set as the upper screen off on on, on. Um, some people set it to hold a call those sort of things are all available on there it's actually a limited number you can't you can't get everything you might want to put on there um, I mean, I've, I've also had voicemail set up on in case I've missed a call at some points. Um, but traffic alerts, whatever you want to put on there, cancel guidance. Cancel guidance is actually quite a useful one because it's quite a tricky thing to stop the guidance on the uh, the uh, um, voice rate, the, the navigation. One thing to note on the navigation, actually, and um, it's difficult for me to show you this, but if you want to adjust the navigation voice volume you have to do that while it's speaking and then you can just adjust it with the knob that also applies to the beep you get for safety cameras which is on by default it's quite a loud beep if you've got the volume up loud um, you may want to adjust that by just turning it down while and that's that syncs with the navigation voice so if you turn the navigation voice down that will actually be lower as well 
um, use, very useful. By the seat, we've got these other controls, mirror adjustments. Um, if you want to fold the mirrors in, if you've got automatic folding mirrors, just press these two buttons together. And fold in, fold out. Um, this is your, your windows and your lock for your windows as well. These are also opening windows. You can push, pull up to shut, shut it, push down to open it. If you want to unlock or unlock the car, you've got these buttons. If you, there is a way of setting it to um, convenience entry mode in one of the convenience modes. So I remember where that is actually. Let me see if I can find that for you. It's one of the convenience settings. Um, convenience features. No, is it under convenience? No, it's not under convenience actually. This one's slightly confusing. Let's go back to vehicle settings. Go back. Oops. I think it's actually in security features. Yeah, two-stage unlocking. So if you set that up, um, then you, when you press the button or open the door, only the driver's doors open and then you have to unlock using this button to actually unlock the rest of the doors. Or if you use the, uh, the button, sensor button on one of the back doors, it'll open the car up fully. Could be a nice little uh, security feature. Also in here, you've got the driveway locking, which is quite a useful setting to have set. I prefer to have, have driver lock way locking set and it tell you what speed you want it to lock at. I might usually have it on the lower speed. And audible lock warning gives the beep, beep sound as you lock the car. And you can also in here turn the alarm sensors off if you want to. I guess that's if you left somebody in the car with it locked. Now you notice I've got my screen set up um, particularly for uh, in the center console bit and then some panels um, so if we look on here I've got the map on the right info panel on the left info panel oops I keep doing that I mean to press left on the button buttons so I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm pressing left left on this button here to get out of the screen now I'm back into that menu, I can go to the left in panel, I've got trip summary on there, you didn't used to be able to do that. If you can't do that on your car, it probably means you haven't had the latest update um, done at your garage. Display layout though is what we want to go into, you've got one dial, two dial, full map, media and drive assistance. I'll leave you to play with those, you've got lots of options here you can use. Units is quite useful if you're um, going between Europe and UK potentially, and your language. Again, as I said, I won't go fully into those because PK Jaguar will cover those off in more detail. So I wanted to finish off by talking a bit more about charging, particularly charging on the road. So normally you you're, you would charge at home if you've got a home charger. If you haven't, you can probably find a local charger. But sometimes you actually want to go on a longer journey and you want to potentially plan how you're going to go on that journey. So you can use a variety of apps. I use... Um, quite a few of them. In the UK I use ZapMap because that's probably the best one for the UK. There's also WhatsApp which is very good. For longer journeys and going into Europe I use a better route planner which is ABRP um, on, as an app. Very very good that. Um, they have just introduced some premium features which you probably don't need for the iPace. Um, there's also plug surfing and a few other apps as well and you also need charging cards and charging um, for the charging networks. In the UK um, I use Polar, um, I've got a Polar subscription, you don't need to have a Polar subscription, you can, subscription. You can um, pay with a contactless card there or you can use Polar Instant app which is actually cheaper than the contactless card which I think is a bit of a, a shame but but that's the, the, the fact at the moment. Also I use Ngini a lot, uh, Ngini are just a really convenient network, you can just turn up to them and use your card to charge with, with, on them, you don't need to have any special cards for them. Um, and there's a lot of others as well. You also have to consider how much of uh, travelling you're going to be doing, if you're going to be doing a lot of long distance journeying, so then, then actually a subscription to something like the Polar Network may well be worthwhile because uh, it gives you discounted charging. Anyway, there's a lot of others out there, and I'm very indebted to Simon Halton, who's a member of the iPace um, group on the UK iPace group on Facebook, um, for the videos which I'm about to show you. We we'll show you how to charge at certain charges. Hello, and welcome to this instructional video: on how to charge the Jaguar iPace using BP Charge Master Ultra Charger. Don't be fooled by the name Ultra. These are a 50 kilowatt rapid charger, and they are located around and about the UK and are quite ubiquitous. 
On arrival at the unit, it's best to open your charge flap and remove your CCS plug from the vehicle, allowing you to use both hands of the charger itself. On the screen you are presented with two options. On the right hand side here, that's for use with the Polar Network RFID card that I'm going to demonstrate, and on the left hand side for using the contactless payment situated below. It should be noted that these units were modified to accept contactless payments and therefore the process is a little clunky. For RFID cards it's simply a matter of selecting on the right hand side, presenting your network RID card, you get a welcome message, sometimes with the name, sometimes without, and then you'll be given the options to which charge type you want to use. For the Jaguar I-Pace we want the 50 kilowatt DC CCS on the left hand side, select that and then you can remove the CCS connection from the unit, take it to your vehicle and then plug it in firmly. Back on the screen you'll see some instructions as to what safety checks are being done, shown here in real time because they can take up to a minute uh, in order to safely connect to the vehicle. Having finally completed the safety checks, you'll get a green light showing next to your charge port on your vehicle and it is time to walk away and go and get that well-earned coffee. On return to your vehicle, simply scan your RFID card on the unit. That will end the charge and you'll be instructed to disconnect from the vehicle. Unlock your vehicle using the remote control. That will release the cable from your charge port and then place it securely back into the unit itself. Remember now to put your CCS plug back into the charge port and close your flap so that you're ready to drive away. Thank you for watching. Hello and welcome to this instructional video of how to charge your Jaguar I-Pace using a Genie Point Rapid Charger. First and foremost we recommend that you remove the CCS plug from your charge port before starting any charge. Then using your mobile phone go to the Genie Point website and having logged into your account select the start a charge option. Once that's done it will show you a list of local chargers and hopefully at the top of the list will be the one you're standing next to. Select that one and then carefully select the connection type. You're looking for the 50 kilowatt combo CCS and click on the charge button. Then all you need to do is click on the start charge and listen for the connection to start. On the unit itself you'll see the green light on the side on this particular unit. Come on. And then you can take your connector out of the unit and plug it firmly into the CCS port on the vehicle. At this point the handshake will take place and the safety checks will be done. This can take up to a minute and is shown in real time here to give you an idea of how long it can take. <laughs> Once you get the green light on your vehicle, it's time to go and grab a well-earned coffee and wait while the vehicle charges up. While that's happening, you can view the charge on your mobile phone, and once you've finished, you need to click on the stop button at the bottom right hand side of that screen. That will send a signal to the charge unit, and then you'll have up to 30 seconds to unplug your vehicle, so do this while you're next to the unit. Use the remote control on the Jaguar to unlock the charge port remove the cable from the port itself and replace it back into the unit. That's your charge complete. Remember to put your CCS plug back into the charge port and close the charge flap and ready to drive away. Thank you for watching. Thanks Simon, that's really really helpful. So in conclusion I just wanted to say there's a lot of useful information out there. Um, I would recommend joining the iPace uh, Facebook group if you if you use Facebook. Um, if you don't, but also if you do, <laughs> uh, also join the uh, ipaceforums.co.uk. Um, very useful even if you're not in the UK. Um, lots of very useful information on there. And finally, I would say um, download the apps which are really helpful for your for the iPace. So the Jaguar I Guide is a very very useful app for the iPace. The Jaguar Route Planner app is also pretty useful. You can pre-plan a route and then transfer it using your account to the iPace. And then there's um, a few other apps which are particularly useful uh, for, for the iPace. And one I really, really like is one called Wattcat. If you've got an Android phone, um, it's almost an essential to have for the iPace. It's much better than the the actual um, in-control app which you get for the iPace. Um, you, oh, actually. 
tip there you do need to set up an in control account for your uh, iPlace again you should have been told about this by your dealer um, but you can just go to incontrol.jaguar.com and have a look for that yeah so Wattcat is a really useful app if you're on Android um, the developer RDB who's on the iPlace forums .co UK, has done a fantastic job of adding in all the features that are kind of missing from the standard Jaguar in control app although the in control app has got better there are two versions of the in control app just to be confusing on Android um, there's a new one and an old one I think that's actually there's two on my place as well new well, Jaguar remote is the app you're looking for um, the newer version has got a few more features um, but the old, some people still like the way the old version was laid out it doesn't really matter uh, both of them does the same thing but what cat is a very very useful app um, for that point of view you had some gives you a lot of information about your car including things like your state of your 12 volt battery which is useful so if you've got an android phone it's probably even i know people who've actually got android phones just to run it so yeah a useful little app so yeah that that's basically the, the beginner's guide to the ipace so i hope that's been useful i obviously haven't covered everything in this video it's virtually impossible to do that in this sort of video but there are as i say a lot of videos out there which i'll carry on putting links up to now and if you have liked this please give it a like um, subscribe if you want to it's really helpful um, to grow the channel if more people subscribe to it it means that our YouTube's algorithm pushes it out to more people who can find out more about the iPace anyway the other way you can help the channel is we have a store on spreadshirt.co.uk um, and you can if you want buy some merchandise it also helps out to fund some of the video equipment, which is quite expensive for all this stuff. Anyway, hope this helped. See you soon.